Cher has been under the spotlight for over five decades. But has the superstar ever had plastic surgery? Make sure to watch till the end of the video to find out which potential plastic surgeries Cher may have had and their approximate costs. In 1964, at the age of 18, you can see that Cher has full facial features. They're in good proportion and they complement one another. To me, her eyes really stand out. Her nose is symmetrical and proud. Her cheeks and her jaw have strength and character. She has full upper tooth show on smile and excellent filtral definition. In 1965, at the age of 19, what I see here is that Cher has youthful lateral cantal elevation and she has excellent cheek volume. You can see that cheek volume carried out from the medial cheek to the lateral cheek. In 1966, at the age of 20, once again we're seeing that Cher has this amazing cheekbone structure. And when you look from the frontal view, you can appreciate that a lot of that volume resides in the lateral element of the cheek, not so much in the medial segment, and you'll see that change over time. She also appears to have a nasal dorsal hump, or a convexity as we sometimes call it. And looking at her lips, she has a prominent upper central lip tubercle. Remember that the upper lip has three tubercles, the left, the right, and the central one, and the bottom lip has only two tubercles. These are small prominences of the lip. And as time goes on, pay attention to that upper central tubercle and how the attention starts to move away from the center and you'll see the focus will be more on the lateral tubercles as things like injections and filler starts to enter the picture. In 1967, at the age of 21, what stands out to me is the dramatic eye makeup that she has. And in Cher's case, the left orbit and the left nasal ala appear to be lower than they are on the right. In 1970, at the age of 24, there are some signs of a potential brow lift. Now, a brow lift around this time would have been done in a coronal type of fashion, where the incision is made behind the hairline out here. And it may have been combined with an upper blepharoplasty. The brows to me now look lifted above the brow bone ridge. And this is especially true as you compare it to 1965. There is now also increased supratarsal show. This may result from just a brow lift alone, and it can be enhanced with the addition of an upper blepharoplasty. While elevated brows might make someone look younger, having increased supratarsal show actually can age a face. In 1971, at the age of 25, what stands out to me is that Cher has a short forehead. In previous years, it seemed to be covered by her bangs. Many of the patients who come to me with larger foreheads for, say, hairline lowering surgery, they actually use bangs to cover up a large forehead or a high hairline. In her case, she was using bangs, I guess as a, a hairstyle of sorts, but in reality, she appears to have actually a short forehead. Cher also has a nice sharp jawline, and she has maintained her dorsal nasal hump. And in 1973, at the age of 27, she appears to have opted for thinner eyebrows. Keep in mind that plucking eyebrows is actually more harmful than shaving your eyebrows. I made a video about this previously, so make sure to check that one out. And 1977, I see no change, and that's the same through 1986. In 1987, at the age of 41, I do see some signs of a potential rhinoplasty procedure. Cher's nasal tip and the bridge of her nose appear to have been narrowed, and her nasal hump appears to have been partially reduced. Now, this is a common trick in Hollywood, where a person goes and gets part of their hump reduced, but not the whole thing. So it looks as if they actually didn't have have that much work done. Also, some people like to preserve part of their nasal hump to preserve some sense of their ethnic identity. And there are people who get their nasal hump removed and then they regret it. And then they go to their surgeon to ask to have it replaced, which is a very difficult procedure to do. Around this time, Cher may have also gotten veneers placed. In 1988, at the age of 42, I see no change and that's the same through 1994. In 1995, at the age of 49, I see some signs of a potential fat transfer to the face. There is now more volume in her cheeks, especially medially, and in the lips, the upper lip now looks bigger than the lower lip. And that was not the case with her natural lips. Also, the lower face to me looks fuller. 
than it was before. Keep in mind that with a fat transfer, the memory of the cells from where they came, in most cases the fat comes from the abdomen, that fat remembers its origin. And so when it's in the new location, it's going to still behave very much like abdominal fat cells. And so if you gain weight later in life and you gain abdominal weight, let's say, that weight will also show in the face. Cher may have also had another upper blepharoplasty, this time I think maybe combined with a lower blepharoplasty and maybe even a canthoplasty. This has now further enhanced her supertarsal show. In some ways, as I said previously, increasing supertarsal show will age the eyes, but in other ways with these other eyelid procedures, she has in a way rejuvenated the eyes. So both are at play here. But I also think that her brow lift from before is holding up quite nicely. In 1996, at the age of 50, I see no change, and that's the same through 1998. In 1999, at the age of 53, I think this is where Cher may have had her first facelift. The jawline looks much more defined to me. And as you guys know, I like to look at the area around the ears to see if there are signs of scarring, especially any tragal changes. But with Cher, she usually wears her hair uh, in a way to cover up the ears, so I can't tell um, what exactly went on in terms of incisions that may have been placed around the ear. But Cher has previously admitted to getting a facelift at some point in her life. In 2002, at the age of 56, this is where I'm starting to see the signs of potential Botox use to the usual target locations, including the forehead, the glabella, and to the crow's feet. All those areas look much smoother now. She also may have started cheek and lip filler around this time. To me, the lips look like they have more volume, and again, the medial cheeks have been further enhanced. And this would also make sense with the general timeline of when Botox and filler were approved originally for cosmetic use. It was around the early 2000s. In 2003, at the age of 57, what I see here is that Cher has excellent skin. And this might be from a combination of laser treatments or chemical peels, but it usually starts with excellent skincare. And keep in mind, we have the first products of our skincare line coming out very soon. So head to feelconfident.com and sign up for the newsletter for the latest information on these products. We have a facial cleanser coming, a facial moisturizer, and an HA serum that are all made from scratch and all made extremely well to keep your skin looking and feeling as nourished and as healthy as it can. In 2004, at the age of 58, I see no change, and that's the same through 2011. In 2012, at the age of 66, I think this is maybe around the time when Cher had her second facelift surgery. Not only does the lower face and the mid face look tighter to me, but also the lateral element of the eye looks more sweeped. And keep in mind that with a facelift procedure, you can impact the eyes and how they look, especially if your incision is continued more superiorly. You can then sweep the eye and even the lateral eyebrow more to the side giving it a more elevated type of appearance. And this is now more than 10 years after her original suspected facelift surgery. People will sometimes ask, you know, how long do facelifts last? And it's hard to put an exact number on it. Ideally, you would want to see a facelift last for at least five years, hopefully closer to 10 years. But everyone ages at a different rate. So sometimes you get a facelift and a year later, you start to see that, hey, uh, I maybe have a little bit more jowling or a little bit more laxity than I did a year prior. Now, is that because the surgery wasn't done um, as ideally as it could have been, or is it because your aging accelerated during that year? It sometimes becomes difficult to tell. And we have a video on the various types of facelifts that are out there and how they're performed and the pros and cons of each. So make sure to check out that video. In 2017, at the age of 71, what I'm seeing here is that Cher has these little wrinkles and little creases in the lower eyelid area. 
and those can be very difficult to correct. One of the most popular options for correcting those wrinkles is actually with laser resurfacing, such as a CO2 or an erbium YAG laser. Other people like to do lower blepharoplasties with a skin pinch excision to smooth out that skin. The problem is then you run into risking the potential of ectropion, where your lower eyelid hangs down too low. Some people choose to do Botox or even filler into those little wrinkles, but that usually is not the optimal treatment for those wrinkles. Notice here the significant medial cheek volume that has built up over time. Compare this back to say 1966, and you'll see that there's a very different distribution of cheek volume compared to her original face. And all too often, filler is placed preferentially into the medial cheek compared to the lateral, whether it's being done with fat or with HA filler. And what that does is that it makes the medial cheek appear a bit too heavy. In a youthful face that's more heart-shaped, the primary focus of the cheek volume is out laterally along the cheekbone. So to more accurately recreate a youthful cheek, the filler should be concentrated laterally with less of it placed medially. Because think about it this way, as we age, with gravity, the face is gonna fall down and in. So you don't want to be exacerbating that with the use of injections. In 2023, now at the age of 77, I'm seeing some signs of a potential revision brow lift. I think her original brow lift lasted for a very long time, and she may have had a revision to further elevate the brows. But in my estimation, it looks like Cher may have had a brow lift that does encompass the entire brow complex. Now, whether that was done with modern endoscopic approaches or through a similar incision to the coronal type of approach, that I'm not sure. And the total cost of these potential facial plastic surgery procedures is $420,000. It's clear that Cher's allure goes far beyond her stunning looks. It's her vibrant energy and irresistible charm that truly makes her an icon. Her unique spirit captivates audiences, proving that true magnetism comes from within.